Chapter 12. Sorry. I walked home all alone, thinking, Dave, I'm sorry. That wasn't nice, my mum's advice. Go and say you're sorry. I told her, no, I will not go and tell him that I'm sorry. But it was me and you should be keen to let him know you're sorry. I dug in my heels, despite appeals, to admit that I was sorry. There's no TV, no treats for tea until you say you're sorry. I'm sorry now, you rotten cow. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I had a shout. Now there's no doubt that I'm very, 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 very sorry. 13. No big deal. The next day Davy passed my door without stopping. I ran out and said, wait up Davy, but he kept walking. And there I was running after him and he wouldn't stop. So by the time I reached him, I was puffed and annoyed with both him and me. Didn't you hear me calling you? I ranted between gasps to fill my lungs. And he looked at me, just looked at me. And I spent a lifetime which lasted no more than a second thinking about all the things he could say to me. In response, in reply, all the things I deserved to hear. But he smiled, just smiled and said, hi. I felt strange, embarrassed. I looked away, but didn't walk away. I caught sight of Davy's break box in his hand. He'd start as his break early, like just after breakfast. What have you got? I asked, digging into my bag for my own break box. I opened mine up so we could both look and compare snacks. He had carrot sticks, a thick chunk of cucumber, breadsticks, grapes and an apple. I had salt and vinegar crisps, chocolate buttons and a packet of peanuts and an apple. I'll swap you my peanuts for your cucumber, I said. I love cucumber. It's the only green thing that I'll eat. I can't eat peanuts, said Davy. I'm allergic. I frowned. I didn't really get it. I'm allergic to peanuts, said Davy, but I'll swap you your packet of chocolate buttons for all my cucumber. Fifteen buttons, I haggled. The packet has probably only got ten in it in the first place, Davy pointed out. So I gave him the packet and took his cucumber, and we carried on munching and crunching as we walked. Don't tell anyone about my allergy, said Davy after a while. Why not, I asked. I don't want to fuss, shrugged Dave. Promise me you won't tell. So I promised. No problem, no big deal. But the promise left my mouth, escaped my mind, fizzled out, sizzled out, and I forgot it. Pure forgot it, clean forgot it, left it, lost it, just forgot it. Chapter 14. Big mistake. I told Alex, big mistake, about David's allergy. Big mistake. How allergic is he? Big mistake. I don't know, I said. Big mistake. He didn't run away screaming. Big mistake. From a packet of peanuts. Big mistake, if that's what you mean. Big mistake. I was sorry I spoke, big mistake. I might have guessed, big mistake, that he'd have more, big mistake, than his fizzy feet wrong with him, big mistake, said Alex scornfully, big mistake. My cousin Jennifer has an allergy, big mistake, said Pete thoughtfully. She's very allergic, big mistake. To cat hairs, they make a sneeze and sneeze, big mistake. Sneezer, said Alex just as thoughtfully, big mistake. And I thought, oh no, I know that look. Big mistake. He's just had an idea. He's going to do something to Davy. Big mistake. Telling him about Davy's allergy was a big mistake. Chapter 15. Too hot. My world was too hot. The country was too hot. The city was too hot. The street was too hot. The school was too hot. The classroom was too hot. My clothes were too hot. My skin was too hot. My blood was too hot. Watching Alex whisper and laugh with Pete was making my insides too hot.